Today I have a video for you that has two topics. The first one is talking about five don'ts or five mistakes that you can do in landscape photography. And then in the second part of the video, I'll talk about if this photo of mine is real or not. I mean, if the rays of light are there or if I added them in post. So let's get started. Hey everyone, my name is Toma. Photo Tom here on YouTube. Uh, this channel is all about landscape and travel photography. So if you're interested in this kind of topics, make sure to subscribe for more similar videos. Also, if you want to know about my instructional videos, there's a link in the description. You can watch them 14 days for free on Skillshare. So you can just click the link and see the details. Now, back to the topic from today, the five don't from uh, landscape photography. Of course that you can find a lot of five don'ts. So these, these are just five of them. <laughs> so the first and I think the most important don't in landscape photography and in photography in general, but we're talking about landscape photography here. So the first don't is uh, don't take a photo without knowing exactly what you are photographing. And this may sound a little bit strange. What do you mean I don't know what I'm photographing? I'm, I'm looking at it. It's the landscape in front of me. Well, in a way, yes, you can say like this, but let me ask you something. How many times you drove by or walked by a landscape, you thought it's interesting, you photograph it, you went home, opened the photo in Lightroom or Photoshop, look at it and said, why have I stopped? It's nothing there. Well, the answer to that question is you didn't know exactly what was the element that made you stop because um, many people think that we see with, your, with our eyes and in a way it's true, we take information from the world around us with our eyes, but the way we experiment what is in front of us depends on our brain and our current experiences. It depends a lot on our current state of mind. Sometimes this, uh, being in, in forest uh, for some people can be uh, a burden, for some people can be uh, a joy. It depends on how, um, how you see things with your brain. And when I'm telling you, be conscious about what you're photographing, I'm telling you, just ask yourself, what is, what is the element that made me stop here? What is the real reason? The mountains, the way the light shines on the top of the mountains, the, the valley or whatever. Because when you're going to give yourself an answer, you're going to photograph according to that answer, you're going to focus that, you're going to frame that, you're going to create a composition that supports that, that thing that you... You are, you are saying to yourself that that's the reason for which I stopped. So this is the first don't. The second don't. Let me check my list. <laughs> don't think that you only need to go out for, um, to, for uh, sunrise or sunset to make really good photos. It's true that during sunrise or sunsets, uh, the, the light is gorgeous, it's perfect and you can get some really beautiful photos. But here are some photos that uh, were shot during the day. So it, it, all, it, it only depends on how you look at it, how you uh, try to interpret light, and how you, um, how you try to express in your photos the way the landscape looks in a certain moment of the day. And as you can see from my photos, uh, I think I think they look really really well. I don't I don't want to brag, <laughs> although I'm bragging. But the photos I think they they look uh, they look really well. The third uh, don't, and this is a big one. And here you uh, I may I may get some uh, some comments against me. Don't use presets. And why, why I say that I can, I can get some comments of booing and, uh, and something like this because there are a lot of creators that sell presets and it's, it's a good thing for them. The reason I don't sell presets is because I truly believe that presets or using presets are a waste of time. And let me explain why. Yeah, you can click a button and a certain look will be applied to your photo but that look will need to be tweaked. That's the first thing. So you'll still need to do some editing. The second thing is um, 
do you really want all your photos to look the same? Or, uh, okay, here, here you, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're going to say, but I can buy hundreds or thousands or, or presets, or I can even download them from for free from different shady websites, so I can have multiple looks. Okay, let's skip this. Do you really want your photos to look like a thousand other more uh, other guys out there? Do you really want your photos to be the expression of a vision that it's not yours? Do you really think that you can be a, a, a good photographer by not applying your personal um, your personal vision on your image and and how I, I mean I could I can't post something that it's not an expression of mine. I think it's it's not mine in the end. But we can debate that. You can write comments and we can talk about it uh, all night long. <laughs> okay, number four. Uh, don't just edit by pulling sliders. So the, four, the fourth don't. It's still about editing because there are a lot of people that, okay, maybe they don't use presets, but the way they're, they're editing is by uh, opening the photo and increase the, the, the contrast and uh, increase the, the saturation and make a contrast curve or something like that or do some, some, some general stuff and they think that is editing. Well, in my personal opinion, it's not. Editing should be, um, a, first of all, a, a, a process of thinking and planning. You take a look at the photo and you say, okay, what, what is the, the, the subject? What is the focus point? And how can I enhance that? What are the elements that distract me? So I need to take care of that. What are the, the, the things that need to be corrected in terms of color? Maybe there's too much color to one side of the photo and I don't want to attract the eye to that um, to that area. So I dim down the saturation in that area. Maybe I boost the, the brightness of, the, uh, of another area in the photo. So you need to understand that you can do those things and it's not bad. You can edit your photos and they can look good and it's still called photography. Even, even if you're doing the, this editing or zonal editing uh, where you alter the brightness on different areas, it's okay. It's, it's something that photographers did in the dark room in the old days, how they say they did it from the beginning. It's not something that we invent. Photoshop, this way of editing and the tools of Photoshop are inspired uh, by the, the, the way the, the, I don't know, the, the, ori the original photographers, <laughs> I don't know if I can say that, but the way the, uh, photographers used to edit their photos in the, in the darkroom. And the five don't is don't think a camera uh, or a sharper lens or a, or a newer camera will enhance your artistic abilities as a photographer. Gear doesn't matter in terms, uh, and, and it's true, in terms of uh, uh, of artistry. Uh, if you want to be a better photographer in terms of composition, choosing a subject, creating, uh, understanding light, gear will not matter at all. But gear does matter if you want more dynamic range, sharper lens, uh, images that look better from a technical point, uh, the ability to shoot at higher ISO values with less noise in your photo. So it's it's uh, it's something that you need to understand that gear does matter for certain things, but it, they, gear doesn't matter for for being uh, an artist, if you want. And now let's get back to the second uh, topic from today. I posted a photo on my Facebook, and it got um, about 600 likes, I think. And it's this photo over here, and there were also some. Uh, uh, mean comments that I choose to delete because um, I, I simply don't care. And if I offended someone that posted a mean comment and I deleted their comment, then it was by intention. And I really hope that you are offended that you can't express yourself freely on my photo. And the comments were about uh, me um, uh, trying to impress the viewer by adding the rays over there. Well, uh, the photo was done during one of my workshops in Nera Gorge, 
it's a it's a really beautiful place where you, you can shoot waterfalls it's located in Romania there was a workshop there were 14 participants and they all saw this photo taken and I explained over there why it was this possible and um, how I achieved it it was a combination of luck and the perfect uh, the perfect timing but the perfect timing uh, happened by luck it, I didn't plan to be there at a certain moment but we were there and the waterfall was spraying um, streaks of uh, or small droplets of water in the air and the way I was looking at the waterfall was perfect in relation to the position of the sun and that created uh, the sun rays uh, the sun rays and I was able to capture them and see them and just have them all uh, in my photo. Of course, the photo is edited in 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 the, uh, in the in the direction in the direction that I want to grab your attention and focus it on the waterfall. And then I enhance the the rays of light. Of course, I did all that, but the rays are there. So, in the end, if you want to uh, learn more about my instructional videos, check the link below. You can watch them 14 days for free. On Skillshare um, and uh, if you want to add something or ask a question use the comment section below and until next time keep on photographing because it's the only way to get better thanks for watching bye bye